The other thing we want to look at um, in protective device coordination is what if you don't know how to do coordination? What if you're not an expert in this stuff and you don't have everything memorized? And What happens if you've got a system that's all messed up? Well, this little button right here is called automated coordination, or we call it in our literature smart PDC. This is the world's first automated coordination program. When I click on this, you're going to see a little dialog box come up in the middle of the screen, and it's going to run through several thousand calculations, and then you're going to see all these relays and everything change settings. So we'll just watch that for a second. Here's all the relays and everything and the way they've changed. Now, you may want to right mouse click on it and show the original curve as to what it was so you can see how bad these settings were originally um, from where the program recommends that they're set. And these, are all, these settings are all controlled by, if we go up to Tools, Coordination Options, and I want to look at information like Transformers, um, where all my NEC 450-3 setting requirements are located, or if I want to go to Relays, where I can um, um, change my over-travels, my safety margins, my minimum gap tolerances, my safety gap tolerances, um, things like that. It's all available right in the program for analysis. Um, we won't get into too much detail because I don't want to um, spill all the uh, trade secrets. So the really cool thing about this, though, is if you go to Window, Auto Coordination, it allows us to get a report that tells us why we're doing the settings. In this case, here's the secondary main breaker 2A. It, it automatically documents that this main is an unsupervised setting. The primary full load amps is 108. The max setting is 600%. The secondary full load amps is 3098. The max setting of that is 125% based on the, the protection requirements we have. And that's 3873. It automatically flags us that there is no um, bus rating. So there's an automatic check that we needed to go look so it couldn't verify the bus rating um, because someone forgot to put that in. Notice that it, it shows all three breakers, C, D, and B, that were on the main bus. Even though we only were analyzing one of them, it shows them all. It then gives us the old setting, the new setting, and it tells us why it's making the change. In this case, we had to lower the 3,520-amp 3, 1.1 um, setting to 3,200 amps to comply with the frame rating. Now, it also said we could not model um, the 125% NEC overload limit for the transformer because we didn't have a big enough breaker. It also tells us that... Um, the secondary main was set to 8,000 amps to coordinate with 2B, which was set at 5,600 amps. It then documents the motor, full load amps, service factor, safety factor, locked rotor asymmetrical, locked rotor symmetrical, and so on. I don't know about you, but typically it's very easy to drag and drop a time current curve. To document all this takes an hour or more per curve so that when your client wants to look at that information, you have a documented record of why you did it. That's what's so neat about this. So this tells me that warning. Somebody forgot to, you know, put an overload in. Um, it, it also flags a warning to check for a contactor. And then it sets the device. If it cannot set something properly, it flags an error. In this case, the fuse was unable to protect the transformer damage curve, so it flags an error but it did coordinate with the downstream devices. The relays, the relays get very complicated. In this case, it had to coordinate with um, two different conductors, two transformers, two secondary main breakers. It had to account for the delta Y transformer shift, everything in the system. So it did that. It provided a setting. It flagged it. It actually... Um, tells me that everything is selectively coordinated and everything's protected from the damage standpoint. It did flag a warning because I had instituted um, a clipping value that I had set internally and it flagged it on that. So 
um, in just a matter of two seconds, we have a completely coordinated system. We have all the documentation as to why. These are in the XML format. I can right mouse click, export to Excel, Word, Open Office, um, any Windows program, and write my report to management. If I want to look at my settings, I can go File, TCC Report, and here's the documentation of all our settings that can be output. So that is how we do protective device coordination. It's simply completely interactive. I guess there's one thing else that we should show. If I want to fault just one bus, typical coordination curves are all buses are faulted for our viewing. If I fault just one bus, notice it automatically changes and shows all my remote voltages and currents. It automatically shows all of my um, backup relaying exactly how it is. This is not a drawing package. This is an actual interactive dynamic simulation program. So you can look at all the remote backup relaying, troubleshoot any problem in just a matter of seconds. We can also do, I'm not going to save this curve, we can also troubleshoot directly on the one line by faulting looking at this little button which is a sequence of events recorder and notice how it it automatically does the sequence of events trips this device it says this device is going to trip in 1.87 seconds and this device is going to trip in 0.44 seconds so you can see it automatically highlights it in red because this is going to trip before this one I can go to window sequence of events and it automatically shows my manufacturer, my type, my current, my trip time, upstream differential time, coordinating interval, and comments as to whether or not it's, it's tripping properly. So I can troubleshoot from the one line or troubleshoot from the TCC curve, whichever is easiest for you. So that's how we create time current curves. That's how we do protective device coordination troubleshooting.